Welcome to this uh, course physics of uh, semiconductors and I will start uh, the lecture with an uh, demonstration an experiment that you must have done you must have seen during your uh, primary classes or upper primary classes and the experiment is right here on the table which uh, looks for which of the materials are electrically conducting and which of the materials do not conduct. So, look at that experiment once again. So, we have a battery and a bulb and these two hooks you can see. This is a series connection. We have just connected this battery to the bulb and then uh, one end of this bulb goes here and the open end of the battery goes here. There are wires here. So, you just connected a battery with this bulb and uh, the connections are open and this acts like a switch. If I can connect it by an electrically conducting material, then the circuit is complete, the bulb should glow and if I connect it by a material which is non-conducting, then it should not glow. That is our class 5 demonstration. So, let us see. I have uh, a cycle spoke here. So, it is a metallic object and if I use this to connect these uh, two points, you can see that the bulb glows. Okay? So, cycle spoke uh, is conducting, is made of conducting material. Then I have a, a plastic coated copper wire. This is a usual copper wire which is used in our electrical connections and on that we have this plastic uh, cover. So, we have uh, removed this plastic cover at the ends. So, if I use this copper wire to connect these two points, we again see that the bulb glows. So, copper is conducting, but this cover plastic cover itself here is that uh, plastic cover alone. There is no copper wire inside, we have removed that and this plastic cover, if I connect this, eh, the bulb does not glow and we say that this plastic is not conducting electricity, it is a poor conductor or an insulator, okay? this is an insulator, but copper is a conductor. Varieties of things people put here, pencil lead, graphite and other things and check what is conducting and what is not conducting. So, this primary school experiment just divides the materials in two categories, electrically conducting and then electrically non-conducting which you can call insulators. But uh, all conducting things are not equally conducting. All our circuits, all our household wiring, uh, the motor of, of a fan winding of this motor, all this is done with copper. Okay? One can do it with other uh, metals also, they also conduct, but then copper is a much better conductor than aluminium. Aluminium is a better conductor than iron, iron is a better conductor than stainless steel and so on. So, different materials have different conductivities. So, there is a gradation, it is not just a binary type conducting and non-conducting. So, I will give you some conductivities to give you an uh, idea in what range conductivities vary. So, electrical conductivity the SI unit is known as semen per meter uh, do not worry if you do not understand what this semen per meter is, what this conductivity is, how it is defined. Maybe we will do it later in uh, later lectures, but here just to compare SI unit is given this uh, S by M and the numbers you focus on the numbers to get a, a relative ideas 
that uh, which one is more conducting, which one is less conducting and so on. So focus on those numbers only. So silver, so let's start with silver. The silver conductivity is uh, 6.30 into 10 power 7 in this uh, SI unit. Copper is 5.96 times 10 to the power 7. So if you can uh, do a silver wiring in your house, uh, that will be much more efficient as far as the electric conduction is concerned. Of course, the costs will be, uh, you know, you will be at the top of the world. Then you have the aluminium. Let us see aluminium. Aluminium, the conductivity is 3.5 times 10 to the power 7. So this is 6.30, this is 3.5. So aluminium is uh, not that costly, but then uh, yes, the conductivity is uh, lower. Iron is 1.0 into 10 power 7, even lower. Stainless steel, stainless steel, this conductivity is 1.45 into 10 power 6 and then silicon the conductivity is 1.56 into 10 power minus 3 germanium it is 2.17 2.17, just 2.17. Then you have diamond. Let us write here. Diamond. Diamond, it is 10 power minus 21. Then glass. This is 10 power minus 11 and you have Teflon workers who work at very high voltages their instruments are coated by Teflon and the conductivity is of the order 10 power minus 23. So that's the kind of variation and what we are interested in this course the course is physics of semiconductors and the semiconductors we are here we are in this range you can see if you compare with copper copper conductivity is 10 power 7, 5.96 into 10 power 7 and silicon conductivity, conductivity is 1.56 into 10 power minus 3. So almost uh, 10 to the power 11 times smaller than uh, silver. So this is uh, silicon. Most of our course will take silicon as the model semiconductor. Germanium is there. Then uh, other semiconductors are there, gallium, arsenide, based semiconductors are very important. But uh, of this range, so almost 10 to the power 8, 10 to the power 10, 10 to the power 11 times a smaller conductivity than uh, copper or aluminium or uh, metals. But if you compare with Teflon, if you compare with glass, if you compare with diamond, plastics, this conductivity is uh, much, much higher. Therefore, they are called semiconductors. And why we are focusing on semiconductors so much? Because semiconductors are almost at the center of our uh, modern life. You think of 
ISRO sending 104 satellites with in one go. All that control systems of uh, these kind of things. Uh, uh, is, the semiconductor is the uh, one material uh, which uh, is there in all kinds of control systems. Chandrayaan, Mangalyaan, all those things. So it's all because of this uh, semiconductor electronics that we are able to do all these things. If uh, we come to our own daily life, our mobile phones, our calculators, our televisions, TV sets, all these or transmission, reception, all these things need electronics and in those electronics we use semiconducting materials. Solar panels, you must have seen so many solar panels. This is seen as a, a great uh, uh, opportunity to fight this power failure situation uh, or power crisis. So solar panels are there, lamps are there, small small lamps are there which have small small solar panels. You have big solar panels from where the electricity is given to the grids. Then uh, the LEDs, light emitting diodes, they are called LED bulbs. All these LED bulbs are, are getting popularized and uh, so because they consume less power and all those things. So all this... Uh, controls, wherever you have uh, some uh, control there, you know, the semiconductors will be there in your washing machine, everywhere semiconductors. Therefore, we focus not on uh, conductors, that is a separate physics of, in this course I am talking, not on insulators, but on this semiconductors. So what is this which makes semiconductors so important? What is this? that uh, gives uh, copper a much larger conductivity than aluminium and much larger conductivity uh, than uh, iron. So how this conductivity is uh, governed, what physics goes on inside the material which decides that this material should have this much of conductivity and, and so on, that uh, will be the main thing that I will be doing in this uh, particular course. So what I am focusing it is the mechanism of electrical conduction. Once I know the mechanism, then I will be able to understand what is making conductivity of the order of 10 power 7 or 10 to the power 6 or 10 to the power minus 3 or 10 to the power minus 11 and, and that. To understand that mechanism, I have to understand how electrons behave in a solid. So in a solid you have uh, positive uh, ions and electrons uh, or nucleus and electrons. Uh, many of the electrons are in the inner orbits and some of the electrons which are in the outer orbits, they actually decide many of the properties. So how electrons behave in presence of uh, that uh, multitude of those positive ions, that I have to understand. And very interestingly, that uh, behavior of electrons in uh, the field of uh, positive ions or electric field, that is not governed by the classical physics that we learn uh, in our high school days. Newton's laws of motion, F is equal to ma and from that uh, conservation of linear momentum, conservation of energy, all those things that we study, they are extremely useful equations, extremely useful procedures. But when it comes to understanding the motion of electron, the behavior of electron, how electron will respond in a given situation these laws do not work and we have to learn a completely new kind of uh, physics which we call quantum physics, quantum mechanics.